morning. <laughs> Got to clean the beans off the floor to put the corn in. All right, we had some problems with the grain dryer for a while, but now we're dumping corn. It's going up into the leg, coming down in the spout, and you can see by the dust coming through and the sound. We're starting to fill the grain dryer. We don't have anything running yet, but we're gonna get this full and then fire it up. This truck is empty. I'm gonna take it down to the field now and uh, fill it up bring it back we'll get everything probably emptied out before we start the dryer and fire that up and wait to see how it goes you can see looking at the corn it did freeze last night the green leaves on the edges there are kind of starting to turn pale so that's good whoa it didn't even hit a hundred thousand it rolled right past it oh you're kidding me this is crazy a hundred thousand people have now subscribed to some uh, strange redneck guy from central Minnesota who drives tractors and has a camera. This is uh, no doubt the strangest and most unexpected accomplishment of my life. Well, 100,000, it's been fun guys. I've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching the last couple of years, but now I've accomplished it. I'm out, we'll catch you guys later. I'm kidding, of course. Did you guys hear that? I think there's a Challenger running. That one's full. The rain dryer's running. That's a good sign. I thought we had a new filter on hand for that air system, but we don't. We called up to Midwest Machinery in Glenwood. They've got one there. So I'm gonna run over there quick and grab a new filter. We've got the old filter on there, but it's pretty crusty. It was packed full of stuff and it sat all year. So I'm a little bit hesitant to start the air system up with that. Uh, if it doesn't have enough air pressure, you're gonna plug pipes and have all kinds of problems. We're having some difficulties with the dryer getting it up and going and keeping it running. Uh, nothing too big, not that big of a deal, but there's always some bugs to work out the first couple of days with the dryer. And since we're about five miles away from here where we're harvesting, what we've decided to do is to just go down there and harvest and fill the wet tank for today and probably, hopefully, start the grain dryer up tonight. That way dad and I can be around it while it runs all night. So we're gonna be here to work the bugs out and we still get some stuff harvested. We are back out here, getting everything set to go, bringing everything over to this cornfield so we can get to work and knock some acres out. Yeehaw! Look at that monster eat that corn. It's a beautiful sight. Apparently, if you stand up in the seat just wrong in this and it detects that you're not in the seat, it begins beeping at you until you put it in park, but I'm not really in a position right now to be able to put this thing in park, so I'm gonna have to wait a minute. Well, you can hear I didn't get the beeper turned off yet, but I'm gonna pull up here and unload it, and I've actually got Garen from uh, Ziegler Egg Equipment in Fergus Falls. He's gonna come ride with me for a while and help me figure out some of the settings on this thing so that I can drive this spaceship well, and uh, set it the way I want it. Beep, 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 beep. Back and forth, back and forth. Garen came out from Ziegler, helped me out with some of the settings. I definitely just didn't have a lot of the settings set right and I'm just trying to get used to running this spaceship. Um, definitely different than the deer, but as I said before, anybody who thinks this thing has a noisy cab, you haven't spent any time in the new tractors because this thing is quiet and uh, it's definitely smoother than the deers. Actually, uh, I get a lot more hydraulic noises in the cab than I do engine sounds. Uh, and that usually comes when I've got a full cart and I'm trying to turn a little bit going up a hill on the other end of the field. I get some hydraulic sounds, uh, but certainly, you know, nothing that you, you wouldn't get with the deer. Uh, so far, I'm impressed. This is a comfortable tractor.
more cab corn. I didn't do it. Seven to eight. All right, so we can't dry corn tonight. He's full. He's gonna cut a path now. We're breaking through the center of the field and he's just gonna cut an opening there so that I can pull up next to him and dump and then once he's empty, he'll continue on his way across the field. This field's too long and the corn's too good and the header's too wide to make it from one end to the other, which is good. Very Adam, about a mile from that curve. Well, we got to the more hilly part of this field. I'm guessing since you're asking, it's doing better than we would expect it to. Yeah, I guess it gets down to 140, 150. Some of it is over 200. It definitely must be a water issue. And again, more of this. It is now about 6 p.m. Our holding tank is full. The grain cart is full. Our trucks are all full, especially this one. This is the kind of madness you get when you put a John Deere guy in a brand new Challenger and he panics while running the joystick. I blame Obama? Well that figures. We just started running it faster. I actually came around the corner and I saw it happen. It blew up. Really? I came around the corner and saw it just starting to spray and then it popped off. In between the two pieces of steel, the rubber wore out. Yeah, and then and let it broke loose. in half. And then. Well, I suppose it will. Yeah. So, what do you think then? Push it, push it into place. It's dang near. It's a quarter inch. I don't even know if that. I guess. Then you don't have to. Maybe we're going to have to hold, hold it. it. A little more. Hold it. Right there. I can hold it right here. Yeah. So what happened back here was we had just started to sift them up. And I ran back here to make sure the pipes weren't shaking and nothing was coming apart. And I got here just in time to watch that pipe come apart. By the time I ran over and shut it off, we already had 20 or 30 bushels on the ground. It looks okay now. We're up. We're going. Again. I guess I'll just have to keep an eye on it from the comfort of my living room here. Nothing like supper in the living room. It's about 9.30 now. You can see the yard is lit up. It's beautiful this time of year, it's a little bit noisy, but it's fun, the smell of corn drying is awesome. We're going to test the moisture coming out and make sure everything's running right. I'm walking up the uh, holding tank now to see how much room we got left in here, or how much room we've made in here by drying out of here, and uh, hopefully at least that truck will fit inside here. Plenty of room. Well, the pipes in the back all look good. I'm going to grab a sample out of the back of the dryer and see what the moisture is coming out at. Well, we're going to fit both of those trucks into the holding tank. I'm going to start the third one up here. That way, later tonight when we dump the third one, we've already got it over the pit, so it's just easier that way. now 3 a.m. Let's go see what we got. Well, that's it. Back to bed for a couple. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank <laughs> you.